um, widespread than, than having a, a cartridge. And, th and then there's also this kind of thing, which looks like a uh, centrifuge uh, that is used in the medical industry, and it looks like it has black powder in there. Is that right? That's right. This, this is uh, another method um, where you actually place the, the charge away from the, uh, uh, the bulkhead. You, you, you push, you have a, a long wire connected to um, your, your charge, and, and you put it down into the, the, the body tube a ways past where your, your, your parachute is packed. And that way, it, it pushes the parachute out of the body tube um, instead of just pro, uh, putting uh, pressure in, in the uh, body tube to push everything out. So if you did that, this whole thing would stay with like the front portion of the, of the rocket instead of separating out? Um, yes. Okay. This is, uh, a, this is provided, there are several different providers of, of, of these kinds of um, black powder receptacle. They, they all have a, a, an igniter in, in the bottom of them that's, that are pre-built. Um, they've got measurement, measurement uh, gradations on the side so you can, um, you don't have to have a separate measuring device. You just pour the black powder into the point where you need it and then um, you put a, an expanding foam piece in the end to keep the black powder in contact with the igniter. Because if the black powder is not in contact with the igniter, what's going to happen? Well, as the rocket goes up, um, its orientation changes. Um, say, say you've got it set up like this um, and it's on the way up. Uh, if, if the black powder uh, moves away from the igniter, uh, it's it's possible uh, to uh, to not have deployment of one of your parachutes. So you just need to make sure that your black powder stays in contact with the igniter. Right. Okay. So basically, instead of hooking up light bulbs, we're going to hook up wires to these terminal blocks, and that goes to these uh, ejection charge canisters. Right. Okay. So what else do we need to know to to set this up and uh, get it ready for launch? Well, uh, one of the primary things is a, a safety switch. And when you when you take a dual deployment ro uh, rocket out to the to the launch pad, you do not want to have your um, uh, black powder charges set up to fire while you're handling the rocket, while you're doing your prep work, while you're you're loading the rocket on on the uh, the launch pad. You don't want to have your your launch rod tilted over and sliding your rocket on with live black powder charges. And so one of the important safety considerations in dual deployment is once you have your rocket loaded on, on the, uh, uh, the launch pad and everything's ready to go, at that point uh, you have a switch of some sort that turns everything on. Okay. And then um, you're at, at that point um, you want to put your, your uh, igniter in the rocket because you want to have, you know, in case there's any, any um, uh, static discharge with, with the igniter, you want to have your, your deployment system ready to go before you put your igniter in. Okay. The sequence is very important in so getting... In case the rocket takes off, you want it to deploy? Yes. Okay. yes. So you'll turn it on before you hook up the other igniter? Yes. You want to, you want okay. to turn on your, your deployment charges before you put your igniter in. Okay. Very important. Um, and then uh, we don't have any switches here, but uh, we do have this book here that we recommend. It's called Modern High Power Rocketry 2 by uh, Mark Canipa. I hope that's how you say your name. Mark, Mark if I'm saying it wrong, uh, you can kill me later. Uh, but this is a very good book on how to set up dual deployment, and it explains basically everything that we've talked about so far. Um, okay, so Jeff, is there anything else you want to talk about? I'm sure we'll run into something. Okay. <laughs> um, what I'll do is Jeff has given me a video on how, to, how he has tested these in a vacuum chamber, and I'm going to splice that onto this tape. And uh, so what you'll see next is how, to, uh, how this is tested in a vacuum chamber. Now, you, don't, you do not need a vacuum chamber to set this up. Uh, but this explains, you know, when the pressure decreases, you're going up in altitude, and then when the pressure increases again,
that means you've already passed apogee point and it's on its way down and you'll see basically these light bulbs light up when the ejection charge when at that point in time when the ejection charge would actually fire so that kind of shows you how it actually works inside the rocket okay we're going to perform a static test in a vacuum chamber of two dual deployment altimeters on the left we have the perfect flight high alt 45k dual deployment altimeter and then on the right we have the Intercor Electronics AIM USB dual deployment altimeter. Both of these altimeters have lights hooked up to the deployment circuits and both of them have the drogue circuit on the left and the main circuit on the right. We're going to apply vacuum. We should see both lights on the left light up when vacuum reaches equilibrium. As the vacuum leaks out of the chamber, we should see both main circuits fire their lights at 400 feet for the perfect flight altimeter and at 150 meters for the Intercore altimeter. Okay, we're going to now apply the vacuum. Okay, the vacuum is slowly being released from the chamber. The Intercore has fired and now the perfect flight. Both main parachutes have deployed. Seven. Eight. So the Intercore is reading 786. The perfect light reading is 2516. Um, so the next video that we're going to do is to explain what happens